college campuses around the world have exploded in recent weeks in protests by pro-Palestinian students and faculty members against Israel's war on Gaza, in which more than 34,000 people have been killed. In university after university, protesters are demanding that their schools sever any direct or indirect financial and academic links with Israel, including by divesting from companies with ties to Israel. The protests have led to an array of different responses from universities. On Monday, Columbia University canceled its main graduation or commencement ceremony. Many universities have called police and other law enforcement agencies onto campus. In the United States alone, more than 2,000 students have been arrested. Both protests and the campus crackdowns have also spread to other parts of the world, from Canada to Australia and in multiple European nations. On Monday, students at Oxford and Cambridge in the United Kingdom also set up encampments. Yet, even as tension continues to soar at several campuses, students and administrators in some universities have managed to negotiate agreements that have acceded to some of the demands of the protesters. So how have these universities managed protests, and what deals have students and administrators struck in these cases? For the most part, the agreements that have helped calm tensions have revolved around a few common themes. Columbia announced on Monday that there will be smaller, school-level ceremonies during this week and the next, instead of a large commencement. Also on Monday, pro-Palestine student protesters at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT, resisted a university deadline to clear the encampment. This was after the Institute's president issued a warning letter to students where he asserted they would be suspended if they did not disperse voluntarily. Harvard authorities issued a similar letter to students on Monday, saying that the students who continue with the encampment will be referred for involuntary leave from their schools. Students at more than 100 universities are protesting across the U.S. Their counterparts in at least 20 campuses outside of the U.S. are protesting and several of these protests are also encampments. While some students and those supporting them have welcomed the breakthroughs with university officials, others have criticized the deals as inadequate. Northwestern University is a case in point. Immediately after the deal, two Palestinian students at the university said they were proud to have a seat at a table that we've never had before, student-run newspaper The Daily Northwestern reported. Similarly, the student protesters at Brown celebrated the deal after the encampment was dismantled. However, not everyone has hailed the deals as a win. The Daily Northwestern reported that some students were disappointed that the deal did not involve divestment. On the other hand, Critics of the pro-Palestine protests have also accused the universities of buckling under pressure in reaching the agreements. On May 1st, two graduate students and one first-year undergraduate student at Northwestern University sued the institute in a breach of contract lawsuit, saying that the university breached its own rules by allowing the encampments. The lawsuit also criticized the agreement for allowing student protesters to stay on campus until June 1st. The University of Southern California's Academic Senate voted on Wednesday to censure Carol Folt, the school's president, after several tumultuous weeks in which the administration canceled the valedictory address of a Muslim student, cleared a protest encampment within hours, and called in police last month to arrest dozens of protesters. The Academic Senate, which consists primarily of faculty members, also endorsed calls for an investigation into the administration's actions. Its resolution, which passed by a wide margin after a several hours long meeting on Wednesday afternoon, cited widespread dissatisfaction and concern among the faculty about the decision making of Dr. Folt and Andrew T. Guzman, the provost, who was also censured. The vote represented only a fraction of the university's 4,700 faculty members, and the Senate stopped short of taking a vote of no confidence in the administrators, which would have been a harsher rebuke. Despite criticism, Dr. Folt has maintained considerable support from the university's trustees, and some faculty members have quietly sympathized with her. Still, the vote was significant with far-reaching implications, said William G. Tierney, a professor emeritus of higher education at USC, who has written about the response to campus protests across the nation. The petition from the faculty was thoughtful and the discussion was serious, said Dr. Tierney, a past president of the Senate who has criticized Dr. Folt's handling of the protest and who confirmed the vote. No faculty wants to rebuke their president and provost. But this was warranted. Christina Dunbar-Hester, the acting president of the university's chapter of the American Association of University Professors, who watched the meeting, 
said that faculty members have been particularly frustrated by a lack of communication from administrators and the speed with which the Los Angeles Police Department was called on protesters who were not violent.